Forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, with respect to home care, um, there are a lot of choices out there. Uh, what you want to think about um, as you go down this path, or as a loved one goes down this path, is um, is to do your homework, okay? Um, it's, it's really important that you ask tough questions. It's your money, you've earned it. Uh, spend it well. I have provided a brochure here. It's really, although it has our colors on it, it really is a great tool because it helps you to ask questions of whomever you're interviewing. And you should treat it like an interview. Is the agency licensed? Are they accredited? Are the caregivers, their employees, or does it work like a registry? There are agencies out there that are sort of like match.com. Here's my dad, here's a caregiver, we match them up, and so goes the relationship. Pros and cons to both relationships. You can hire privately, understand the risks of doing that, um, because there are some risks. You wanna know um, what kind of insurance does the agency carry? What kind of background checks do they do? Remember, these are individuals, in essence, strangers, coming into your home. Have they been vetted? Um, Arthur made a great point. Um, Nancy spoke to that as well. Baypath, as well as the other ASAPs, do vetting for you. So if you work with an agency through Baypath, and then you continue that care privately, they've already sort of done some of that pre-vetting. But um, it's, it's a very important um, uh, part of the process. Are the caregivers trained, et cetera, et cetera. We really like to say, you know what, it all starts with a conversation. Just because you pick up the phone doesn't mean you're obligated to have services. If, you, if any agency is sort of pushing you to that, I would sort of be like, whoa, wait a second. You know, it's a process. Start the conversation, um, start it early. And um, um, what I would say most of all is that, you know, particularly if you're a caregiver that um, kind of, I like to say, refilling your cup is not a selfish thing to do. It's actually pretty selfless. And so, um, you know, don't hesitate to, um, to do that. Um, and you can certainly call us. Um, there are lots of resources out there. We are located in downtown Westboro, and I'll be available for questions after. Okay? Thank you. Very much, Thank you. So now we're just going to talk very briefly about um, the other concern that shows up when people walk into my door because someone is picked up with an Alzheimer's diet, so they're like, oh no. We didn't do any planning. What are we going to do? Isn't there something about we have to give everything away? We have to wait five years. We have to do all these things. So I'm going to give you two minutes just to explain why that's, none of that's true, uh, if you're Frank and Mary. So how many of you folks would assume that in this situation, if Mary needed nursing home care tomorrow, that, folks, that they were going to have to spend down a lot of this money before the, Mary could qualify for MassHealth? How many of you think that that's the case? Uh, no, that's false. If, if Mary were to go to a nursing home tomorrow, today, and Frank were to come in to me and say, oh my God, I didn't do any planning, what am I going to do? I'd say, well, that's okay, that's okay. Because the way the Mass Health rules work, and Mass Health is what pays for nursing home care as well as a lot of other things. The way the rules work, that for Mary to qualify for Mass Health and therefore have Mass Health pay for the nursing home care, uh, Mary has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. However, Frank at home can own the home as long as it has equity of less than $800,000. It's actually a little bit more than that. Can have cash or cash equivalents, and that's what all of these are. The IRA, it can be turned into cash, and therefore it's a countable asset. The annuity probably with a penalty can be turned into cash. So that's all cash or cash equivalents. So he can have up to $117,240. Don't ask me where these numbers come from, but they, that's the right number. Um, in cash or cash equivalents, but he can have unlimited income, unlimited income. So in this situation, Mary went into the nursing home. Uh, first of all, on day, on day one. On day two, what we'd want to do is have Mary shift all of her assets to Frank. So now Frank owns everything. And then on day three, we'd want to have Frank buy an annuity, to keep $100,000, take the rest of the cash. So remember, there's about 325000 there. 
take the rest of that cash and buy an annuity. As long as the annuity calls for regular monthly payments back to Frank over a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy, and I'm sorry that that's a lot, but that's what the annuity has to be, um, that purchase of that annuity is a legitimate spend down of Frank's assets, and the next day Mary can qualify for Mass Health. So in Mary and Frank's case, they don't have to be, they don't have to have done all this all extra early planning, they don't have to have given away their assets to an irrevocable trust or to their kids, they're all safe. So in this situation, if Mary's got early stage Alzheimer's, there's nothing crucial that they have to do right away, except a few things. First, they need to update, make sure they have powers of attorney, because it's very important at all times here that if we need to be shifting assets from Mary to Frank, and Mary doesn't have the capacity to do that, that there's somebody that has the ability to do it on her behalf. Second, uh, we talked about the fact that in this situation, you need to shift the assets to Frank. The only problem here occurs, would occur, if Frank dropped dead, right? Well, obviously, that would be bad for a lot of reasons, because then Mary would be kind of stuck. Um, but also, if ha they had the traditional estate plan, which is that if I die, everything goes to my wife, and if the two of us are dead, then everything gets divided among Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., right? That's the standard estate plan. If Frank has that estate plan and dies, and he owns all these assets, then Mary gets them. And if Mary's in, is Mary, is Mary already has Alzheimer's, she may be needing home care for which she now can't qualify because she's over assets. And if she goes to a nursing home, all the assets are going to have to get spent down, and, and up down to the house, and then, and then she'd qualify for MassHealth, but then MassHealth would lean the house. So the key for Frank and Mary, if they haven't done it before, is at least at this point to change their wills, or to have Frank change his will to say, that when he dies, instead of everything going to Mary, everything goes in trust for Mary's benefit. This has to be a testamentary trust. It has to be a trust that is part of the will. That's the federal rule, right? But all assets can be protected, and they can do it without transferring things out and waiting five years and all that jazz, right? So once again, if you're, if you're suffering from early stage dementia, or if you know somebody or you're close to somebody who is suffering from it, you, need to de you should deal with some of these issues, but these aren't your major issues. Your major issues are call the Alzheimer's Association, find out if it really is true that you have a dementia that is irreversible caused by, al by, by Alzheimer's or some other disease that is irreversible. Talk to the folks at BayPath, find out what their services are. Remember, those are your tax dollars at work, right? And Go see some of these, go talk to some home care people, make sure they get vetted by BayPath, but go talk to some home care people, right? And by the way, Shelby is, there are a lot, they're not all the sweet as her, but there are a lot, typically, people go into home care, they, all of these people didn't decide to do this because, you know, they really wanted to be like boxers, but they changed their mind. The people in this business tend to be like sweet, you know? They're like nice people that want to be dealing with people. So go meet them, go see Tammy's place, and get a sense if you think that your loved one would be comfortable there. Talk to some home care people. Figure out how you and your loved one can stay engaged, can, can make sure your, your assets are going to be protected in the long run, but can stay engaged and be using the services that are really, once again, your tax dollars at work. Thank you very much. Any questions for any of us? Oh, excuse me, a couple more things. Um, if you just are dying to see this again, all right. Uh, first of all, it's going to be on local cable. That's the reason why we're, we're, we're filming for them, so they can play it on local cable. But also, all of my presentations, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, you, you have the information. You can just upload and see this again or any of the presentations I do. Finally, this is an ad. This is an ad. As I said at the beginning, the Alzheimer's Association has tremendous services right now, but also helps us in the future. And we need to be supporting them. And their big fundraiser, uh, statewide as they do a walk the last, the, uh, the, uh, last um, Sunday in, this year, the last Sunday of September, September 28th. September 28th, and Frank and Mary are going to be walking, and they have a team, and we want you to join. So please consider joining us to help support the Alzheimer's Association. Any questions for any of these folks? They're all going to be glad to stay afterwards for a few minutes if you've got private questions that you really just want to talk to them about. Any questions? Uh, seeing none, we're on time. This was a one-hour presentation. We're going to do the third part of this series in September. It's going to be Tuesday, September the 16th, same time here. Uh, and we're going to be talking about dealing with Alzheimer's in its later stages. So these are the, some of the harder decisions, the frail elder waiver, how to be able to stay at home 
talking a little bit about hospice, a whole variety of those issues. Thank you very, very much for coming. Have a wonderful summer, and uh, well, hopefully we'll see you in September. Thank you. Oh, and can I just have a round of applause for my wonderful guests? <laughs>